Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And we're continuing here in Dundonald, and we're still in the graveyard of St. Elizabeth Church. And where we're heading now is up to the Cleland Mausoleum. And I want to talk to you about the Reverend John Cleland. And John was born in 1755, and he died in 1834. And John was also a lad, the agent for the Stuart's extensive estates. And in the 1790s, he was also an agent to a landowner at Saintfield. And among the largely Presbyterian tenantry, uh, John had a reputation for being a sharp practitioner. And he was also a very active uh, magistrate as well. Now, an attempt was made on his life in uh, 1796. And he, like the Clelands who are buried in Bangor Abbey, can trace their ancestry actually back to James Cleland of Larnockshire. And, uh, of course, he was the cousin of William Wallace and fought in most of uh, William's campaigns. And John kept uh, Vice Count Castle Ray informed of uh, local United Irish men activity in the area. And his greatest success was actually in getting a dis dis satisfact dis disaffected sorry, United Irish man uh, living in Saintfield, Nicholas McGain, to identify local United Irish men and to divulge their plans for insurrection. And so, as you can guess, he certainly wasn't liked among the uh, Presbyterians. And so this information fatally weakened the Irish organisation uh, in its heartland. And there you can see the tower of the church and you also get a good view of the mound there. Now in 1798 he was an officer in the Newton Orge Yeomanry and he was judge advocate at the trials that were held there. And John Cleland tried to secure the indictment of, uh, for high treason of William Steele Dixon who was the Presbyterian Minister of Portofurry. And in 1805 uh, John married Esther Jackson and Esther was actually descended from, well, her, her mother was, was actually uh, descended from the, she was a Huguenot, and she came to Dublin. So Esther actually has, uh, her mother was a Huguenot. So in 1805, John married Esther Jackson, and the couple went to live at uh, Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant sounds like something you would see in Virginia, but uh, it was actually, it's actually over here. It was, it's between Newton Ords and Belfast, uh, actually at Dundonald and so in 1830 they changed its name and mo locals will know this to Stormont and which later became Stormont and of course they built the Stormont Castle and the Reverend John Cleland died there on the 25th of June 1834 aged 80 and there's the the monument the Cleland monument the mausoleum now in the late 1850s uh, John's grandson, John Cleland, he redesigned the, the castle into a Scottish style castle and that in the 1920s became the seat of the Northern Ireland government, of course. And of course the Cleland family em emigrated abroad and eventually the Stormont estate was purchased by the government of Northern Ireland in 1921 for about £21,000, which was a, a steal, it was a complete bargain. There's no doubt about it. And of course, the government still meets at Stormont today. But this is the monument. And it's a fantastic, uh, a fantastic monument. You can see there, the date on it, it's the Cleland Ma uh, Mausoleum. And it was erected in 1842. So quite amazing. Just zoom in and let you see that. So there you are, it's quite a substantial mausoleum, there's no doubt about it. But that's the only right no that, that's actually on it. And so the mausoleum itself was erected by Eliza Cleland to the memory of her husband Samuel Cleland of Stormont Estate, who died on the 20th, um, the 20th of May, uh, 1842, and he was only aged 34 years. And of course the, the church was named Elizabeth Church in 1882 after Eliza Cleland. So there you are. 
big history of the Clelands, not only here in Dundalm, but also in Bangor Abbey as well. And you get a good close up here of the top of the uh, of the moat. As you can see. And of course, the Reverend John Cleland is also buried in there as well. So there you go. You've got the Cleland Mausoleum. Mausoleum. You've got the old Elizabeth Church. You've got the new, or the modern, should I say, Elizabeth Church. And you've got the old moat. And of course, King John from England stayed there on that moat. And it's said that he lost two pence there playing cards in the 13th century. So thanks for joining me and God bless.